Hi everybody. Tonight is something a little different. I've got my daughter Kat here in the studio and we're just basically going to do a meet and greet talking about Kat, talking about what she does for the channel, why she said yes, or if she thought she actually had a choice. Didn't. Yeah. So we'll go through a little bit of that. But yeah, tonight this is the opening of Tea Time with Cat. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, Cat. So tell them about yourself. Um, I mean, I'm really excited for this because is my true Leo self. I love to be the center of attention for a period of time. So I'm quite excited about this. Um, I have an associate's degree in psychology. I am currently working on my natural resource management degree, which is exciting. I work at a um, escape room place, so I have some really fun stories about that too. Um, yeah, I have a cat. His name is Mothman. It's his birthday next month. He's his picture's on the thumbnail. Yeah, he's iconic. I love him. He's a little monster. He's huge. Well, he's a boy. I know, but he, he's big. Very much unlike the two that roam around here. Yeah. Um, Bam. Later, to, later this evening, you'll probably end up seeing Tiana and Merida. Merida, the office manager. Tiana, the intern. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's elevator pitch of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. We're using corporate lingo already? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sell me this pen in five minutes. No. Okay, well, it's you're my fired. Pen. <laughs> it's my pen. <laughs> Sell it to me. No. <laughs> Get your own pen. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. So, yes, I'm, I'm also going to be very excited about this because I've got this whole slew of special effects that buttons. I want to use. I've got buttons, and Wait. I've got one very special for you. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, dude. <laughs> Yes! That's all I wanted was the that's, home improvement. That's all you wanted? Yeah. Oh my god. That's iconic. Okay. Uh, she's digging. Oh, yeah, that'd be the intern. Is Yeah. Tiana has the masculine urge to dig. Very much. Yeah. Very much so. I said that in my bio class the other day. Mm -hmm. We were talking about something, and I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, it's just the masculine urge to dig. And this guy from across the room went, huh? And then all the guys started pulling out their phones and showing me, uh, yeah, started showing me pictures <laughs> of giant holes they dug at the beach. And I'm like, you're going to tell me that the masculine urge to dig doesn't exist. And then you have this. Well, exactly. You know, well, and it's because this is the way. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> the masculine urge to dig. Truly, truly crazy. I, I'm, I'm very excited about this because this is the first podcast that I can actually use these on. All right, now it's story time for me. Uh -huh. there, there was this one instance. The, um, this was, hey, yes, well before you were born. Okay. Um, Alice and I were at Hollywood Studios, and it was mm -hmm. back when they still did the Streetmosphere. So they still had a lot of the, the characters and the denizens of Hollywood Studios and Hollywood and Vine and mm -hmm. you'd meet all these actresses who are coming out and you get to audition for a director and all that and it was great and everything and one of the actresses pulled out somebody from the crowd and he was very tall and she said oh my you're carnival tall well it hit me just right I started laughing out loud and hard Alice of course was Chuck shut up and she sh shoved me into a store <laughs> Um, the reason is that she was embarrassed because she knew that my laughter was going to draw attention to the actors and she didn't want that at that moment. I would have loved it, but, you know, just to give you an example, Alice, um, she loves doing this type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the, uh, well, how can I say it? It's when it gets weird that, um, she starts to get, she starts to get a little edgy and stuff and yeah you know, I, I you get it yeah you know because i'm also kind of like that if i'm not the one making it weird then i'm uncomfortable well and as you have told me you are the funniest person you know i am the funniest person i know i am hilarious and people don't appreciate it 
<laughs> I don't know. I, I, exactly. Maybe. People think I'm hilarious. Well, the important people think I'm hilarious. <laughs> I see. Uh huh. People at my job think I'm hilarious. Well, of course they do. I, I've started this one joke that I'm basically a stationary Disney Jungle Cruise skipper because that's basically what I am at that job. And this one family really liked it. They, I don't think they were a family, actually. It was a gaggle of girls and then one guy. And they looked me dead in the face and said, yeah, we just picked him up from rehab. And I'm like, you decided to come here first? You decided the first thing we're going to do after getting this guy out of rehab, go to an escape room and play murder in London. You're going to be locked in a room with no windows and no way out. Literally. Until you solve a puzzle. Yeah. The running joke also is that the bathroom is the first puzzle because people really struggle to find their way back from the bathroom. Okay. So that's, okay. that's another um, running joke. Having been in unfamiliar buildings, I can feel that. Uh, yeah. I, I get that. It's a zigzag hallway to get to the bathroom too. So people, oh. get, people get lost and confused. Fun. It's a one way though. It's really, it's really easy to find. Well, you, sure. You walk down the hallway until you see a door that says bathroom. <laughs> don't go into the door that says staff only, please. And don't <laughs> hang out in our staff area. And don't open the one that says electrical room. No, that's it's, it says laser force on it. So don't open that one. Laser <laughs> force? Yeah. Do I want to know? I mean, it's part of Loveland Laser Tag because that's the other company that Jeff uh, owns. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah, where yeah. they work okay. on the laser tag suits. Gotcha. So okay, that's that's what Laser Force is. Okay, I was just thinking of the room where the electrical panel is and the no. transformers are, and somebody tries to pee in there, someone's going to die. No, that is behind a staff only door. So okay, they should go in anyways. <laughs> Shouldn't. Well, you've had to shoot people away from the staff only door, so no, not the staff only door. Our little like break lounge where it, like there's the hallway and it goes wham wham wham, and then it's there. Okay, so it's a little cut out in the hallway. All right, That's all where right. Our first aid kit and really bad tea supply is. Yeah. Okay. Someone bought like a giant box of really gross tea from Costco, and you know, when you're tired enough or sick enough, it hits. It really does. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Okay, so. You've described a little bit about your work. Describe a little bit about your schooling. What are you going to school for? I already said I'm going to school for natural resource management. I... Well, what's that? <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> it is basically the management of natural resources. Ooh. Uh... I thought that was a car crash. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of was. It started off like a car like a. Yeah. Like, we were playing a car crash sound after I just <laughs> talked about my major. That's crazy. Oh, well, okay. Anyway, I was excited about yeah. it. Yeah, no, it's fun. It just caught me off guard at first. Well, sure. But yeah, I have an internship. That's pretty sick and cool. I get to play mm -hmm. with predator birds. So, right yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. There's a little, my little best friend is a Eastern Screech Owl. No, right. Western Screech Owl. Sorry, he's Wesso. Okay. I love him. His name is Tico. We're naming all the ambassadors right now. He's really cool. Right on. Okay. Yeah, Tico and Cedar. They're my babies. Love them. Excellent. And Persephone, our turkey vulture. She's so pretty. Persephone? Yeah, her name's Persephone. How classical. We well, we all voted on the names. Everyone voted okay. for Persephone. Because at her old facility, they thought she was a boy, so her name was Hades. So we're like, we need to... Of course. Yeah, we need of to course. name her Persephone now because okay. we know that she's a girl. And she has a really pretty pink little face. Okay. Do you, do you feed her pomegranates? No. She's a carnivore. I know. I know. <laughs> we do feed her rabbit, though. There you go. After the bunny spa. The bunny spa is a bucket where we put in <laughs> frozen rabbits to dethaw them. Yeah. <laughs> it is labeled the bunny spa. It has a little sticker on it of a bunny in a bathtub. And then we throw in frozen rabbits. Um, you. That's what I spend my weekends doing, y'all. I, I, I skin rabbit. I skin rats because if we feed them to our um swanson's hawk named galileo because he is not all there in the brain um so he's very spacey so we named him galileo pretty iconic I know. that's that fits yeah, yeah. he also does that a lot fits. of stargazing so i think it's perfect <laughs> yeah no he, i've never seen that man look down unless he's eating he is always up in the air okay yeah he's he had a west nile so his Aww. neurological system's all fubbernucked Dang, that's okay. That's horrible. A lot of a, a lot of our bird stories are really sad. Mm. Yeah. Fun okay. fact. <laughs> fun fact. Not so fun. 
the first case of West Nile and songbirds have just been discovered. So it is now spreading more rapidly. So clean your uh. shoes, guys. I have to spray and clean my shoes every time I walk into that building. I have a dedicated pair of boots I got from Target. Okay. They look like zookeeper boots. They're kind of cool. But yeah, um, that's the sad news about birds. Yeah, that is sad. Yeah. So now we have to be even more cautious with our foot baths and things because our birds are so prone to getting sick. Yeah, well, that tiny metabolism and as high as that metabolism is, mm -hmm. yeah, they're going to burn and they're going to burn fast. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah. Oh, yeah, Galileo. That's what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. We have to skin his food because he gets so distracted with fur because he just plays with it. So we cannot give him any food that has fur on it because he won't eat it. And that's because he's got this neurological thing going on. He gets, yeah. he just wants to play with it. He doesn't understand that he's supposed to eat it. Right. No, I get it. I yeah, get so it. So his casts are very bony. They're not yeah. very held together. Well, it's, I, I get that because, you know, it's, it's a tactile thing, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, this feels nice. Yeah, we also have to put, his enclosure is terrifying if you don't know what, why he, it is set up the way it is. So he does, his feeding block isn't like another perch. It's on the ground because he spends a lot of his time on the ground. Because he, okay. he just sits. Okay. Um, so his feeding block is a little pyramid that has a flat spot where you put the dead animal. So it's terrifying if you look in there and don't expect a pyramid with a dead animal on it. It looks like we're sacrificing something to him. Uh, it's actually you know, a, a zag, zagarot? Uh, zagarot. Yeah. It's one of those. It's a little wham, wham. Yeah. Two hours later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And unfortunately, that was not the one I wanted. I wanted. <laughs> yeah. That's the one I wanted. But yeah, his, his enclosure is really cool. Okay. I can talk about my birds all day long. I love them so much. Right on. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what else we got going with you. Um... Everybody got to be introduced to you on my first set of videos. Mm -hmm. And the first trip to Disneyland that we all went on after my first set of surgeries mm -hmm. was in May. So everybody got to meet you then. Yeah. And then there was a span of time, mm -hmm. edit here, where we uh, had to wait a little bit. And then I tried to organize us to go to Oogie Boogie Bash. Mm -hmm. And we got to do that together. And we have not had a, da a dad-daughter trip in a very long time. Yeah. And that was the first time that you and I got to go do that. Mm -hmm. And go to Disney, just us. It's the first time we left the state, just us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And honestly, I think that was one of the more fun trips that I've had. Mm -hmm. Um. I want to do it again this time, not be so sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not, not end and up And not losing. be on the verge of amputation. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't the fact, yeah, I was, I was on the verge of it and then, and then it <laughs> happened. Anyway, I know. I'll put a warning before I put the leg up again because, you know, people get kind of weirded out about that. Understandable. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anyway. We did Oogie Boogie Bash together. Um, there are s um, one, two, three sets of videos that we did with Oogie Boogie Bash. And I did a whole lot of point of view ride videos mm -hmm. and such um, where you are on at least a couple of them, at least, mm -hmm. that I know of. I haven't done the point of view ride of Mike and Sully Save the Day. Love them. I know. It was a great ride. It was. <laughs> Anyway, I, I will probably do that next. Um, I noticed that my channel has cooled down quite a bit. I've gone from a thousand views every 48 hours down to 52. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it was a dramatic drop. Yeah. So, but those three months were fantastic. I got a lot of subscribers. Thank you all for subscribing. Um, but... Um, well, well, okay. Moving on, moving on. Um, let's see. So, thoughts on Disney? Um, what kind of thoughts? Well, I wasn't going to ask you to do the whole thing of 
you being the helper for two people who were in scooters. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that to you. We're, we'll talk about that probably when we all four get together and do the character breakfast yeah. um, round table mm -hmm. or I can't dissection. Yeah. <laughs> debrief. <laughs> yeah. Debrief. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Um, but no, just your thoughts about traveling to Disney from your point of view. I always have a fun time. Um, I always have to carefully pick what outfits I wear mm. because a lot of my shirts break dress code mm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I have a lot of like metal band shirts and they are not allowed, especially the ones that say bad words on the back. Yeah. Disney doesn't like that. No. Disney does not like that. You don't get as in, in as much trouble at Universal for it, mm -hmm. but you can. Yeah. So devastating well you know there are kids there sorry just think about that you know. i know but... that's a, that's a thing yeah that's a thing so what other interests do you have um hyper fixation right now is has been hotel love it absolutely adore it so good there we go there we go yeah, yeah. Um, original series on Amazon Prime. Go watch it. It's so good. Makes conservatives really angry, so you know. And why would it make conservatives angry? Oh, because it's about the daughter of hell making a hotel for sinners to be rehabilitated and be able to go up to heaven. I like that. I like that story arc idea. It's really, really good. I like that pitch. It's yeah. really good. It has a bunch of Broadway actors in it who are singing. Amazing. Jeremy Jordan is Lucifer. I don't know if y'all know who Jeremy Jordan is. He was the original Jack Kelly in Newsies in the Disney production of it. Love Jeremy Jordan. He was also Clyde in the Bonnie and Clyde musical. He very, very, like, star actor. Um, then there's Alex... I don't remember his last name, but he is Beetlejuice, was it Beetlejuice on the original Broadway production. Okay. Um, he's in it. He's Adam. So Adam, as in like as first. As in the original guy. Yeah, is okay. now an angel um, who is head of the exterminators who go down who go down to hell and slaughter people because they're t the population in hell has gotten too high. So once a year they go down, slaughter a bunch of people, and then leave. Ah, So okay. that's the Hasbin Hotel of their rehabilitating, rehabilitating these sinners to be able to you know, atone for their sins and be able to go up to heaven. So hell is less, is less overpopulated. Yeah, yeah, I can see how, I can see how that would actually just drive a lot of, um, dogmatic religious folks up a wall. Yeah. I um, mean, my favorite song in the whole, it's like a musical TV show. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously it's a bunch of Broadway actors. Well, also sure. the guy who is Dr. Facilier in Princess and the Frog. He's one of the characters in there. Oh, yes. He yeah. is. He's a character named Husk, who's like a little cat demon guy. Love him. Very deep voice. Okay. If you ever want to hear Dr. Facilier sing some cuss words, that's where to hear it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but my favorite song in the whole thing is called You Didn't Know. And it's about mm. how um, Emily, one of the angels, didn't know that the extermination happens. So it's this, Charlie is our main character. She's the daughter of Lucifer. She's the princess of hell. Um, and Emily are seeing this duet that basically says, if hell is forever, then heaven must be a lie. If angels can do just whatever and stay in the sky, the rules are shades of gray. If you don't do as you say, okay. you make the rest, you make the wretched suffer just to kill them again. Yeah. That's sort of antithetical to how it's presented in scripture. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they in scripture, there's no groups of angels coming into hell to go slaughter and eliminate and utterly destroy souls. Yeah. It does. That's not. No. No. <laughs> no. But it gets people very angry about this. Like, there is no being saved again. It's like, well, why not? If they can save themselves in hell, it's it's like prison. <laughs> you can... Well, okay. And I do see why they're upset because mm -hmm. in scripture, it's the whole idea of your choice is here and now before you get there. Mm -hmm. You know, because once you're there, there's, it's like, no, there's no probation. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no get out of hell free card. Yeah. You know, it's, you're done. You're there. Mm -hmm. So I get, I get it. Yeah. I get the, uh, I, but the thing is the idea of it, I like that pitch. Mm-hmm. 
I really like that story arc. Yeah. My favorite character who I've decided I'm going to cosplay for uh, Pop Culture Con, is that what it's called now? Um, yeah. I don't know. Sure. Denver Comic Con. Or fan something. Whatever. Yeah. What was Denver Comic Con? Yeah. Basically, one of my favorite characters is Adam's sidekick. Her, oh. His top um, exterminator. Yeah. Love her. Her name's Loot. All right on. Love her. It's Fan Expo. Fan Expo. Okay. Sorry. Anyway. Like Expo Marker. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so my friend Melanie and I are going to do either Adam and Loot or she's going to be Charlie and I'm going to do Loot. Okay. Okay. Um, or we're going to completely flip it and I'm going to be Adam and she's going to be Loot. Okay. I haven't decided yet. Okay. But yeah. And see, the latest thing that I've been watching um, on that whole afterlife spiritual warfare kind mm -hmm. of thing has been good omens yeah i still haven't gotten around to watching oh it. oh please cat come I on know. you got if we're gonna do this you have got to catch up <laughs> you gotta catch up on my stuff too well i know i know i've got to i gotta get on to the has been hotel yeah I and hell on. of a boss which is okay. the original series so has been hotel was pitched while hell of a boss was coming out okay brandon rogers an iconic original youtuber don't watch him if you're under 16 please right um You've definitely heard his stuff before. It's very, like, broadcast around the internet. But a lot of it is very, like, basically stuff I shouldn't have been watching at, like, 12, but I was. Uh, um, yeah, we didn't know. <laughs> I had unrestricted internet access. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any hoozles. It's who, <laughs> it's who made me who I am today. Um, he basically switched from his style of comedy and made it into a show where we have Hell of a Boss, which is, I don't remember the main character, not the main character, I don't remember one of like the, I don't remember the boss's name. Okay. Um, but then you have two um, hellhounds, which are like the lowest class in hell, um, that are his bodyguards. And okay. one of them is voiced by Brandon Rogers. Very funny show. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna switch gears on you. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I've got to do this. Um, I told you that I wasn't going to use this one, but oh, I am. No. Okay, so now it's time for you to talk about Call of Duty. All right. Okay, so what do you want me to talk about with Call of Duty? Well, you're into you're into the game. Mm -hmm. Why you're into the game? <laughs> okay. I, I, keep it PG. <laughs> okay. Remember that. This is going on YouTube, so... Hi, Nana and Papa. There's that. <laughs> but, you know, keep, keep it PG. Mm -hmm. But, seriously, beyond the visceral base, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. What What is it about the game that you like, and what drew you to the game? Honestly, never played the game in my life. Okay. Never played it. I okay. only like the storyline. Okay. Um, I like how fleshed out they make these characters, not just, like this is who you're playing as they they shoot people um like the storylines we don't need to talk about modern warfare 3 modern warfare 3 goes in the garbage i hate it so much i have no idea so go i ugh. they basically ruin everything they set up in modern warfare 2 and they're like this is the newest game like pay 70 dollars to play it it's garbage the skins are awful the weapons are awful the unlock system is awful again never played it just heard these things so she um, has experience of no experience. Exactly. But I'm an expert on it. Um, they jump the shark so fast with one of these characters for no reason. There wasn't a need to to do this. I'm trying not to spoil it in case people don't want me to spoil it. Yeah, um, don't do that. I know. One of a very beloved character passes away. That is all I'll say. Okay. Um, because you don't know which one. Everyone loves everyone. Not everyone. Sure. Okay. Um, but they like jump the shark on it so fast there's no need for them to do that um it didn't push the story plot along basically cut the entire franchise short there oh it makes me grumpy well sure um, i get it yeah but yeah that's that's what i like about call of duty and you know the men are really pretty <sighs> i tried to keep us from going there that's not that's pg well, yeah, yeah, but I was trying to keep, I was trying to steer us away from... Well, that's how I got into it. ...the more it. carnal part of, you know, I... 
That's how you asked how I got into it. That's how I got into it. TikTok. You should feel real lucky that you are comfortable mm-hmm. enough to talk to your father about stuff like this. Oh, I know. Okay. TikTok said, "You want pretty man?" And I said, "Yes, please." So now here I am. Okay. Well, and there it is, folks. Yeah. That's Cat's Call of Duty Corner. Yeah. Call of Duty Corner, guys. Oh, right. <laughs> you know what I didn't say though? What's didn't that? Didn't say I was gnawing at the bars of my enclosure about these men. Until now. Until now. <laughs> womp womp. Uh, exactly. Actually, no, it's more. I'm chewing on the desk. I am shaking the bars of my enclosure. Ain't it fun? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Fun. Moving on. So, okay, so let's see. What else What else about you do you want to talk about? What? What is the... What is the thing that you want everyone to know about you? I don't know. I kind of talked about everything about me. I don't do much. Well, I think it's tea time. I know. Um, I think it's tea time. You know, and I got a thing for tea time too. Okay. I think I do. I think this is it. Well, we'll see. <laughs> and now it's tea time with Cat. I don't know, I don't have much tea that I can like openly spill. I have a lot of tea in like private friend groups, but not much that I can like openly spill. Okay. Um, yeah. The internet's in a craze right now over a couple things. Well, of course. Of course, you know. Um, yeah. What do you want to know? Well, let's see. Do you have any experiences like at the past couple of Disney trips? that qualify as some tea you'd want to spill? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, man. I okay. know. Okay. I didn't do a lot of eavesdropping the past few Disney trips. Yeah, that's true. So. I mean, Alice and I talk about the lady in the scooter. Oh, yeah. Constant She's Love porn, her. You know. Me, 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 me. I love her. <laughs> that's who I'm going to be. <laughs> this tiny, frail little old lady cruising through Tomorrowland, Mm -hmm. (laughs) laying on that horn. (laughs) Hitting people's ankles. That's what I'm going to be. Okay. Well, dang it, I tried. I know. Oh, I have opinions on something. Oh, well, here it is. As a childless 20-year-old, I care about the way you raise your kids. I do not want to hear Cocomelon in the middle of a restaurant. I, exactly. It's what? Cocomelon. It's a, your five-year-old should not have an iPad. Okay. Yeah, your five-year-old should not have an iPad, and that five and that iPad should not be raising your kid for you. Okay. As okay. someone with a degree in psychology, I can say you are fundamentally stunting your child. And there you have it, folks. All right. Well, that was the tea time portion, I guess. <laughs> So there's really nothing else you want to talk about, talk about and tell anybody about? Or? I'm trying to think. I don't think I have much. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. This is kind of a short. I know. A short little video then. I came locked and loaded, but we but we got through my topics really quick. Yeah. Well, I mean, comparatively, this is a, a very short video. I mean, Alice and I will sit here and talk for an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. Um. And I try and pare that down in editing, and I only get to maybe an hour and a quarter, mm-hmm. an hour and 15. Um, with this one, I mean, we're barely coming up on 30 minutes exactly. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, I can talk more about Hasman Hotel. <laughs> Love Hasman Hotel. No, you got to save something for other episodes. Okay. You know, I mean, the, you can't, don't blow the wad on the whole thing on the first one. Okay. You don't. know what they say? 95% of gamblers quit right before their big win. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Remember, guys, if you have a gambling addiction, don't stop because you're just one play away from your big win. Don't stop. You're so close. The opinions expressed by Cat Murray Todd are not necessarily those of Chuck's new adventure or Adventure Vision Studios. But they are from me, so, you know, take them as gospel. <laughs> Yay! Yippee! Oh no, you did it! Yippee! You made the noise! Coca Cola in Fortnite! You made the noise! 
und drink Cola and play Fortnite. Yippee! Love that little guy. Actually, this sort of leads into something that I'd like to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of, it, it's for a trip. Mm. And that's go to Super Mario Land oh, I at go. Universal. I want to go Super Mario Land so bad. Now, Wahoo! exactly. Here in the next couple of years, there's going to be two of them. There's going to be Ooh. one in Orlando, and there's going to be one over in Burbank. Nice. So the one in Burbank, Hollywood, is the one that exists right now. Um, when Epic Universe opens over in Orlando, they're going to do a Super Mario World there, too. Nice. Yeah. Luigi time. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, this is honestly just an excuse for me to play with everything that I've been putting together for the last two weeks since the last podcast. Oh no! <laughs> it's a me, Mario. Oh my goodness, there's just one clip that's so funny that's like, and now I pass it off to my brother Luigi, take over! And he goes, thank you Mario. <laughs> <laughs> It's from my brother Luigi. Thank you, Mario. I think it's so funny. Oh my God. Okay. Well, that's about all that I had. Um, next episode. What do you want to talk about next episode? Next episode. I. I don't know. What should we talk about next episode? Well, we can just sort of talk about. It. I mean, we, we could. Of all the things that I have not talked about yet on the channel mm -hmm. and something that you turned me on to and I have become somewhat obsessed with it. <gasps> Five Nights at Freddy's. There's that, exactly. <laughs> That's where Jack Black killed it with that. <laughs> have, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I know. His little exactly. dance. Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> That's where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Mm -hmm. There's also Smosh. Yeah. You know, and you are somebody that I can talk smosh with. Mm -hmm. I can't because do that. I can't you're, do that. Because you're now the iPad baby of the family. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. How the tables have turned. How well, the yeah. turntables. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I heard a cat. I think it's me. I'm like spinning back and forth and hitting this box a little bit. No, no, I heard a meow. Oh. And I think. It, I, I think th I see I a think lump. It, I think it's Merida in the window. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, but I would like to sit and talk because, I mean, yes, I become the iPad baby of the family. And the reason is, is because I have one third of a left leg. Yeah. Or no, two thirds of a left leg. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's hard to get around. I don't do much. I watch um, a lot of YouTube on the, through Roku. Anyway. There's um, one thing I can now pridefully say. It's that I can beat my dad in a foot race. <laughs> <laughs> that always used to be the case. It took me losing part of my leg to do it. Yeah, it did. But yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, it did. But you know, still can do it. That's what matters. <laughs> I was going to say, embrace those victories. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> because you know, this is the way. One of these days, I'm actually going to learn how to do this right. Yeah. So... I don't know why I'm laughing. I just thought about you should just put a fart, like the most heinous fart noise in there. No. I think it would be so funny. No. Yeah. No, no. It, the reason is, is because I, the, the most disgusting, mm -hmm. the two most disgusting soundtracks that I have on this uh -huh. are the Cry soundtrack and the Kiss soundtrack. Ew. Yeah. This is the Cry. <laughs> Real. Same. I hate it. I hate that. <laughs> I like how, like, <laughs> like, it's so, you can tell he's pursing his lips as he cries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then the kiss. <laughs> like, like, I can't. That is heinous. That is awful. Wait a minute. I thought you were into the ASMR. Not that kind of ASMR. Oh, okay. Well, there we are. Yeah. There's very certain ASMR that I like. Well, sure. And spit painting is not one of them. <laughs> Which is a type of ASMR. I don't know if y'all know this. I can talk ASMR for a while. <laughs> oh, here we are. Hang yeah. on. Do I have one for ASMR? Yeah, I do, kind of, I think. Yeah, let's see if this works for ASMR. Let's see. I don't know. Sure. 
It should work. Go um, ahead. There, you know, people like what they like when it comes to ASMR. Can't judge. But there are some very disgusting triggers that I don't understand how they give you the tingly feeling. Spit painting is one of them. If you don't know what spit painting is, they'll set up the camera and then they're like using one finger to be like, ooh, and like, you know, ooh. And the other finger's going, it's so gross. And they go, so gross. Hate it. Um, but the ASMR triggers I do really like. I like a lot of visual ASMR. I'm not really an auditory person. When it comes to auditory, it's like the cutting kinetic sand. That's really nice. Okay. Um, I'm a lot of visual ASMR, though. So, like, when people, like, make the, the scores on bars of soap to make them into, like, a grid, mm-hmm. and they cut it, love that. Watch that for hours. Um, kinetic sand ASMR, just, like, pe- like people make it into a shape and squish it down with something. So good. Um, there's another one. This one is kind of gross, but I do really like it. People take like little jellies and inject them with like different little things and they pop it out like a pimple. But it's not like a real pimple. It's like colorful and pretty and that's not real. As long as it's not real, I think it's really cool. Um, yeah. I, I, that is so weird. I'll show it to you later. Oh, joy. It's, it's pretty nice. Yeah, not during dinner, please. (laughs) I'll put it on the TV during dinner. Oh, God. Um, oh, there's also this really funny one on TikTok. It's a TikTok live and they're live like all the time. Um... But they're so funny. It's basically two squirrels fighting over the microphone. <laughs> so it's like the little squirrel hand puppet thing. And then it's on the microphone. It's like, mm, mm. <laughs> it's like eating like something off the microphone. Another one will come in and they'll like fight about it. And the other one will eat for a little bit. And then they'll fight about it again. It's, it's so funny for no reason. I also really like anti-ASMR. It makes me cry laugh every time I see it. Basically, people will, like, brutalize their microphone with, like, a cheese grater. And I think it's so funny. I think it's so funny. They'll, like, yeah. scream. And <laughs> I, t- I sent a video of it to mom one time because I was laughing. I was, like, crying laughing at work about it. Um, okay. When, this, is when I was, <clears throat> this is when I was, like, working at the desk and lifeguarding at Wesleyan. Okay. Um, so when you're sitting at the desk there, you have nothing to do. Like, you have nothing to do. Right. So... I would just scroll on TikTok and then this one came across my feed and it's right as someone walked up to the desk and I'm sitting there like trying not to scream laugh because it's making me laugh so hard. And I'm like, you're just signing. And I'm like, tears are streaming down my face. Like I'm laughing so hard at this video. And she like will scream into the microphone. Like it's so funny. Oh boy. Like okay. she, she has the mic turned up enough, like really, like really high because it's like normal ASMR mic where it's like everything's really quiet and close to the microphone and da, 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 da. <clears throat> i don't know why my throat's making that noise that was so weird it, it didn't come across okay good because so. it was like <clears throat> every time i talked no, it was fun. um but it's like the normal like highness of the mic for asmr but then she's screaming into it and like hitting pans together and, like putting a cheese grater on the microphone like she put a cowbell over the mic and then hit the cowbell it's so funny oh. <laughs> like Nothing can pick up on it because it's so loud, but it is so funny. Okay. Yeah, where you got the gain up. So real, loud because really, it's really like the normal high. ASMR where like everyone's talking really quietly and da 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 da. Right. It's so funny. Yeah, that's that's something that I don't think. After having done this for a time, uh, I've discovered that's something that I cannot do. Um, I, I can't do it, and Alice definitely can't do it either because Hmm. i mean we i've got the gain set to where you can actually be audible when i edit these videos Mm -hmm. but if i turn up the gain any more than what i have right now i mean i've got to get in like this Mm -hmm. so there's my asmr voice yeah already puzzle solvers (laughs) yeah and see to hear that i've got to crank up the gain because otherwise it's going to be a lot like this (laughs) <laughs> That's what Alistair sounds like on Husband Hotel. They literally call him the radio demon because his voice is like through a radio. <laughs> it's really iconic. Great. I love him. I love him so much. Oh, great. He's a dear radio demon, and I love him. <laughs> well, okay, we're about 40 minutes in, so I don't know if there's anywhere else you want to go with this or there's mm. anything else I want to ask yet because I want to save some more for another time. Um, well, actually, that's something. Just get your hmm. idea. How often do you want to do this? 
I was thinking like a once a month little feature, depending on how often you're going to do these. Once every three or four weeks. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was actually set, thinking about setting up a separate podcast all to itself of Tea Time with Cat. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, yes, it's it's an offshoot of the Todd cast because we're both, we're both Murray Todd. So mm -hmm. crazy how that works. In, um, it's pure imagination. Um Anyway, that's what I thought about doing, is doing it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think every month would be fantastic. That would give you some time to actually be able to know what your schedule is. Yeah. Um, and because it's The problem when you work on call is I, I do my best, but I never really know. Well, there's that, but there's also the fact that it, are you still going to be doing the internship? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. there's that. Um, I'm that, very that busy. Was, that was something. You're, t you're planning about... Uh, you still were talking about taking a semester off. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am leaning more towards doing it um, next semester. So that's kind of where I'm at because my advisor, love him. Logan Bell, love him. Such an icon. He showed me a way that I can do it where I still have access to all the school resources. I can still go meet with him. I can still like have access to everything. Because um, at CSU, you're allowed four semesters off in your time that i so, did not know yeah so i just submit to i think the admissions office that i want to take an academic break and they're like six and i can take a semester off and come back and act like nothing changed beautiful yeah beautiful and then you just register for the next semester's classes and exactly i don't have to like reapply or anything like that like they're just oh. like have this and i'm like sick and then re-up your tuition and then blah 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 exactly and, oh, so it's yeah. a way to do it where like you don't have to like drop out then reapply or do anything like right. that so yeah and then have that fight with, well, we need your transcripts. You Dude, have them. I went here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, that's happened to me. Oh, my goodness. You want to know the craziest thing? Hmm. Was the installs and sent over my spring transcripts from last year? Logan's just like, it doesn't matter. You're in anyways. No one cares about it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Because that's annoying. I'm like, he's like, yeah, it is. At this point, yeah. I mean, if. No. I'm already a year out of it. Like. Yeah, if if you're you you've you've been admitted. Yeah. You're already in the program. Yeah. So And none of my credits from Wesleyan work for CSU. So, so. what's the point? Exactly. That's what he's saying. Yeah. He's yeah. like, Yeah, we never got that and I'm like, That's so weird because I sent it like three times for them to send it to you and he's like, They didn't and I'm like, it just shows that the school's crumbling, I guess. Either that or you have to go through a specific office in the administration portion of and the what up, blah, 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 blah. an in-person meeting. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I'm just like. And then you've got a, you've got no, an in-person sign for the whatever yeah. and you can't have it mailed to you and mm -hmm. it has to go mail direct and yeah. 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 I, I tried that when I was going to go from Metro to CCD mm -hmm. to UCD mm -hmm. and I told them. I would hand walk the copy of transcripts to each administration office. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was print them out and I would hand carry them to where they needed to go. And they went, no, no, that's not allowed. Yeah, exactly. Like, Why not? I, They're my transcripts. Well, it, because between there and there, the things can happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get a little pen and start inking over things. Mm-hmm. Give myself an 8.0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Figure that one out. <laughs> How'd you get an 8.0? I don't know. They just made more grades for me because I was so good. You know so. that or make it a 9.0. Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Yeah. Oh. I'm thinking 8, though, because it'd be easier. Like, if you already have, like, a 3, then you could just make it an 8 really yeah. easily. See, and I was thinking about instead of doing two lines to make the 8, you just mm -hmm. make one line to make the 9. See, but 9s don't look like that off of computer print. I know. So it would look really suspicious. <laughs> oh, for this one nine, they've typed it in a different font, but everything yeah. else is the same. Yeah, that's how that happened. I mean, they changed the ink. Yeah, they just, I don't know, man. It just, I don't know. The toner ran out, so they had to change the toner. I don't know what you're talking about. Gaslighting's not real. I would never do that to you, Mr. President of CSU. I would never <laughs> gaslight you. <laughs> Gaslighting's not even real. I think that's just a fake term you made up because you don't like me. Oh, here we go. Gaslighting's not real. I want to talk about how gaslighting's not real and you're acting crazy right now. <laughs> so bad that we're close to the end. I would never say that. You're acting crazy right now. I, You are remembering that wrong. Never, never crazy. said that. Crazy? No. 
I was crazy once. No, you weren't. <laughs> they locked me in a room. No, they didn't. They locked me in a room. They locked me in a room. Actually, they locked me in a whole building. And they went, you're not allowed out until you feel better. And I went, okay. Yeah. And they gave me a frozen burrito my first day. <laughs> Did they at least heat it up? No, it was frozen. That's all they gave you was a hard rock burrito. Yeah, my first day. My first morning at breakfast. And they went, we're putting you on watch because you didn't eat anything. And I went, A, not hungry. Got here two hours ago. B, huh? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we're done with that portion. Me too. Yeah. But now I love my psych my um yeah, my psychiatrist. I almost said psychotherapist. I'm like, that's not right. Just I love my psychiatrist. Me. There you go. Love her. She's so cool. I sent her a text the other day and I was like, Hey, like CVS is being really weird. Like they're saying my prescriptions not gone not there. Like I know that like I have some left. And she went, Don't worry, I just sent over a new one for hundred and twenty. And I'm like, Oh sweet. Right on. Girlie keeps me on my meds. Right on. Love her. Okay, so is there anything else you want to talk about? Um. No. No? No. You think we're done? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the exit music. Have some ASMR before you leave. <laughs> yeah okay so yeah um next episode is probably going to be about another three weeks or so yeah maybe yeah <laughs> so yeah we're going to try and do this once a month um thank you very much for joining us bye <laughs> <laughs> Toodaloo. make bye. sure you hit that like and subscribe also hit the notification bell that way you don't miss every time something's coming up bonsoir um, <laughs> That's not correct. N not really. Bonsoir. <laughs> All right, <laughs> folks. I think we need to get out of here before this gets any weirder. All right. Thanks again. Toodaloo.